beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Angels still speak. Hallelujah. Where people who believe in the realm of the spirit and the operation of spirit beings. The Bible says, Here yeah, I come to Mount Zion, and it lets us know we are not alone. Hallelujah. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning. And um, she said, Josh, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I had a dream. And I got a song from that dream. And I want to share it with you. I said, really? And she said, it was a dream. I was ministering somewhere. And she was not even in the ground where the meeting was. And she heard the song. It was a powerful song from the Spirit. And she heard my voice. I was singing it. And um, it was so powerful according to her description. She said the place was so charged. There were all kinds of miracles. People repenting, opening up their hearts to the Lord. And um, when she woke up, she came with a song. And I want to teach us the song. Very powerful. It's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them. Hallelujah, because we are a family. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing the song. I'd like you to receive it in your spirit. Many of you just like new songs. Thank God for the next one. No, 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 no. You see, God gives songs to announce seasons. Hallelujah. Jewish songs were used to announce seasons. So when you heard a Jew sing, it would give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in. If it was a Passover, they had songs. If it was the Day of Atonement called Yom Kippur, they had songs that they would sing. And so I believe that this song came prophetically, coinciding with the great things that God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Very powerful song. The song is a revelation of uh, Matthew 21, the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Worshippers, can you help me? Holy. Oh, holy. Just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. Unedited, we didn't change it exactly as it came from the realm of the spirit. In the name of our God. Sing holy. Holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy. Can you sing it? Holy, holy, holy. blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Hosanna, Hosanna. Let's just have the worshippers sing holy. Just the worshippers. Help me, worshippers. Holy, holy, blessed is He. It was a triumphant entry. In the name of our God, He rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song coincides with the season, God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant entry, riding upon a horse. And that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. One more time. Hosanna. Hosanna. Just sing it one more time. Holy, holy now. Come on, let's raise up our voices and sing. Holy, 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 holy. The Sadducee who comes in the name of Sing holy, holy, a family of faith we understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit on a detail to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God 
said is he who comes in the name of our God. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Oh, let it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. That it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Until you understand the operation of the heavens, you have no right to do anything on the earth. And it's our job here at Koinonia to listen. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon the watch, my watch, and set myself upon the tower. And I will see what the Lord will say. The Bible says, what I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountain top and it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the father to hear what he's communicating for every season god is preparing us training us fashioning us by his spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season and hear me friends if you found your way into this place i'd like you to know that god brought you by his spirit to build to equip to empower you he said rule thou in the midst of thy enemies it takes understanding he said he made many lights but he made two great lights one light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night if you don't have that light you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night there is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule and god is communicating these lights and these truths unto us and father we thank you a privilege and we respect it we don't just believe in you we respect you thank you father in the name of jesus god bless you please be seated we began a series last week on the kingdom hallelujah how many of us were blessed last week praise god we began to establish please take out your pen your writing materials is a teaching so as much as possible whenever you're coming for a meeting like this come with your writing materials God is teaching and building us there's only so much your mind can at a time blessed be the name of the Lord and so I began a teaching last week and I began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom how that the word kingdom comes from two words it means the domain of the king hallelujah how many of us still remember that and we began to explain how that in the system of God the kingdom of God is everywhere the influence and the, the authority the rulership the dominion of the king is exercised is permitted to find expression hallelujah and we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland how many of you remember that we began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom and that every time a colony is created it is created either by conquest you fight and gain access to that colony or you find a virgin land and occupy it hallelujah the a colony is is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom 
and i did tell us that in a kingdom system everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king hallelujah in a democracy we have people living for themselves for instance in america you can decide to walk up naked i can decide to walk naked tomorrow and when people say josh are you okay i say what is your business we are in a democracy but in a kingdom system everyone lives for the king hallelujah if at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king you were termed a rebel hallelujah and i began to explain to us that we are not just believers we are not just born again christians but we are citizens of a kingdom hallelujah and that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our savior not just to our lord but to our king many know him as savior many know him as lord but few know him as king and daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end and god is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are, are not partnering with the holy spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the lord and then we began to explain how that man was given dominion adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and adam lost and gave the keys to satan hallelujah and i did tell us that the entire bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of god i told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus he was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not god's original design for the nation of israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told samuel to go and anoint saul and then david and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of israel understood the concept of kingdom and then jesus showed up john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god hallelujah and when jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of god is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom 
when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he worked miracles signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and i did tell us that jesus for our sake he came to restore the kingdom hear me the primary purpose of jesus was not to come and take us to heaven don't stone me yet it's a teaching hallelujah the primary purpose of jesus was to restore the kingdom to restore the kingdom that's why revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall rule in this life in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter one says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter one down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to running to heaven we are not staying very long here we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts god is reorienting us so that we understand that christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen i will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded 
and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay i like the rendition in amplified the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom the systems of this world the word world here is the greek word cosmos the social system of the world he said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open hallelujah i'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that jesus came to restore the kingdom say after me jesus christ came to restore the kingdom and he did restore the kingdom say one more time jesus christ came to restore the kingdom hallelujah and not just to restore the kingdom but to restore the citizens of that kingdom hallelujah that's why he died that's why he went through everything he went through jesus christ bled and he cried he wept was beaten by cruel and wicked people he went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us hallelujah and the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored the next step is to receive the kingdom hallelujah say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom how do you receive the kingdom by embracing the king of that kingdom hallelujah that's what we call being born again hallelujah being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom so when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing we're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom hallelujah that's why you come up and say lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me and he said i declare that you are lord of my life hallelujah lord of my life you are the king i choose to submit to your governing authority thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom and every time you make that decision as a proof he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life it is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us but he can live in us hallelujah the holy spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom hallelujah hallelujah are you following me now very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because he that told by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as a non-believer the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now 
become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do i will say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you you, you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says the when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost walk on your mindset say after me mindset when he walks upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us to understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. And is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king. That he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far. You truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor. To empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life 
into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit and god designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further we get filled with the holy ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning i follow me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of god's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play 
in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda thank you jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see god does god cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when god calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now god is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again he tells you we are in the same kingdom. you say no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around god is not teaching us denomination and dogma he's teaching us kingdom are you following me now that the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seatmate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one yoruba person one Igbo person and then one northern and quickly quickly three people let's do that quickly quickly yoruba Igbo. please come come up three of you no 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 hallelujah Aaron is from kaduna state she's from the east and ejimi is from the what west now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a yoruba person especially a, a well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture i follow me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say hey, share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah are you listening to me and then for the ebos they have i we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of god that we had on sunday in pastor williams house appreciate them you don't know what i appreciate them <laughs> hallelujah i ate a very delicious soup called in salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise god 
and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see someone just proceeds ah are you a she and then you just greet you know you just bow on and all of that i say are you a yoruba that's nice it connects you are you following me now please i'm trying to communicate a message i hope you understand what i'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person, even if a Yoruba person wears kaftan, his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing. Very quickly. You just know this is a Yoruba person. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? How come there are many Christians and there are few kingdom citizens? It tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have. We have many believers across many churches and many Christians. But the world is still contending whether Jesus is truly king. That means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing Christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see. And let me tell you, the world is not supposed to see different. We are representing different kingdoms. And people ask, I say, who are you, Christian? Who are you, Christian? They say, how come two of you seem to be conflicting? Are you, are you following me? That's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah they are dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were jews God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture. Now the word culture is not a demonic word. I know that um, in our Nigerian and African context, I know that there are many wrong things with many cultures. Alright. There are very healthy sides of culture, respect, love for God. But there are many unhealthy aspects of culture, idol worship, and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement So you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control it says against this there is no law 
and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in jesus christ the moment jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time I heal number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god he came out from under the governing authority of that king and the bible says cain built a city a type of a kingdom after the name of his son enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then nimrod in genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in luke chapter 4 when jesus came he began to speak and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth he found where it was written in the book of isaiah isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the holy ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following to preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life 
helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed many of you who have gone on our facebook i'm sure you've you've seen the great testimony that we have the latest really that we have right now very powerful testimony hallelujah about two or three um fridays ago a woman not even a believer hallelujah came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and say what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of God or to make a name for the ministry. All this nonsense that people do. That's why a true servant of God will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom. Are you seeing that? So if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you, then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel. And we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesus's for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 a says cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your bible cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities through prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich 
the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade we've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them so it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bail because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but sha don't bow and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor Are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogance. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to Baal and we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food and you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king 
but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four it's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected it's called influence i want to show you how god designed his kingdom to be advanced influence look up let me do a little experiment sweetheart come all of you appreciate this lady i mean a, a real ovation for whatever reason just clap keep clapping just turn keep clapping everybody i mean clap and shout look at them wait hold on hold on hold on look at what is happening to her she's happy and enjoying it although she cannot understand this same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us including the religious people i've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him we all desire influence for parents when they call your child and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am i talking help me how much more the king that you represent the bible says the hour has come john 17 verse 1 he said now the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how god gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me to reveal his glory and his majesty is found in psalms 145 and the hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if michael jackson just lift his hand and say i get i'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church who are supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when cecilia Ibru was having a thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love god like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and i or richard jaffo preached his life out he said now that i have this caliber of people let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them let me tell you something there are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you it's your influence the bible says see it that way man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings i was watching the forbes forbes um first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible says for god so loved the world that you are hating <laughs> hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god 
because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages 8 to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset the world is a system that gives you a mindset are you following me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusade after crusade after crusade but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the power of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of christ hallelujah sports number two in the area of arts music fashion this is an area that the church has neglected you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night and those people have paid their price they are competent so people say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity is the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just a revelation i say who and the keyboard is for 10 minutes he's trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth that's what we say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion tell me i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs 
and we think God will do everything and you say I know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we don't invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will I give you a job when you are not competent why should I give you a job when you make my company lose are you get, are you am I provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the Holy Spirit will give you believe what I'm saying I pray in tongues but we are the Nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep building so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say I want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and then we say hey it's happening it's happening. where the it wasn't enacted by angels it was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you. you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a a, a, a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady <laughs> wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind 
of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of <laughs> hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before people are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look, look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children and say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young <laughs> hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me birth bring me birth and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart hallelujah there are many parents that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says, I hate you, I hate you. And then in the night, she flashes him. And then he flashes her back. <laughs> then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again or hi. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say i'm sorry when they need to say i'm sorry that kind of a family is not a true picture the first example of god should be seen in a father the first example of the holy spirit should be seen in a mother the first example of unity should be found in the couples hallelujah to train the children in the fear and the admonition of god i have a dream that after 20 years of marriage you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing no rat race no fighting up and down i'll forever be chasing after you that's what you hear us singing because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy we are adhering to it are you getting blessed i'm provoking something the last area media right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free it has already been paid satan paid people to prove that jesus is not lord he is still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch 
Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? The media. It's just right now that there's a media revolution. God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mentioned this area, something in your spirit says, are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing. And you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members. And then as you are coming, they just bring water for you. And say, daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? Our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems. That's why we are holding this teaching. Hallelujah. But I know we are that generation that the next set of sports people, I look forward to times when before they start playing, while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and, and scoring goals, they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people. And you tell them, I speak under the authority of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. That statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say, this is my mentor. I'll do anything he's doing. And now that he has mentioned Jesus, what is it about Jesus? And they begin to search and God will lead them to a site and they will check. Jesus is Lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there. And then you read and know. Let me tell you, if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again in the next 100 years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes i was checking her facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah coca-cola has 23 million and i check many churches 10 5 11 22 110 300 700 and then a few hundred thousand those are the mega ministries And you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So after you get born again and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you and then he sends you. And then he begins to call you. He says, oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Yums, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an event planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department when he say, I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church the mission field is outside the church he said you are the light of the world not the church so we come and we are built we are equipped on monday you are at work in the bank and someone comes and while you are signing the check you see by the spirit and you say sir you've been having a challenge in your family and he looks and then you tell him i bring you the word of the lord i know that you're having a financial problem begin to tithe 
and be serious tithing is a principle of the kingdom and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say god bless you the king has found expression hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government will say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we're just thinking of how we we'll chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba kabarata ba -ba 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 -ba. I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can i do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts. 
look at the beautiful shirts by the media people this is an artistry and the creativity of one he's a minister but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give god glory hallelujah we believe in it i'm being practical and i'm sharing this dial is going for a, a a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country hallelujah he's going for a training he's the head of the media but it's not just about praying in tongues we realize that we have an agenda we are going we are invading the media and so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks certified every one of these media people you see them doing what they are doing they were trained because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a, play, a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we're not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you what all this mr big nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god would give him songs and then he will write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it 
I look forward to times when, when we tune our radio, we just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested. It's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> Balakaya. We are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it, but let me tell you, it's in you. The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. We are rising. Our parents, like the Eli generation, have done their best. And they are transferring the button to the Samuels. And we will carry it and represent the kingdom. A time will come, they will come and meet you. And someone will want to bribe you. And you hold back his hand. And not just say, No, I don't do it. You say, No. I represent a kingdom don't just say I don't do it someone comes to meet you and says can you come to my hotel I say no I don't do it what you are just trying to say is that uh, uh, I don't do it with you you must let the person know that I represent a kingdom and I'm bounded by a modus operandi and part of it is that we are not engaged in this I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him hallelujah Ejimi does designs when you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time. At that time, we will gather on Sundays and pray. And every time we are praying, although they do not understand what we are saying, they cannot deny the effect. It's telling on their salaries. It's telling on the economy. You come and meet God someone and walking in your office will make his and like Joseph, the person is depressed and he said, what happened? He said, See, I was just told I have cancer. And he said, come with me. As the manager of the company said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cancer. And so as it is. And the person is healed. And he said, I thought it's only in church. And he says, to let you know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Are you, are you understanding the teaching today? Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Not just as a song. Arise. Not just as a cliche. Arise. Not just as a Christian. It's not just about praying in tongues not and sitting down. The call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility. Here and now, in this place, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. In this place, here and now, we let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. So here and now, in this life and with this mortal body, he wants the image of the earthly to experience the fortest of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven. But the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word. Transformation or lack of it. The process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly. The process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels. The treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial. The process by which an ordinary biological being Comes literally a celestial being. When that happens, then we will bring our lives, our families, our territories, and the nations under the submission of the Christ. Listen, listen. What I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now. If nobody has taught you this, then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life. It is our participation 
in bringing this agenda to pass. Are we following now? And there is a way God wants to achieve this. I've taught it under the message, the emergence. You can get part three, but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight. I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king. The name of that strategy is the church. The church is not the coming together of people. Not just that. The church is not just a local assembly. The church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of God in its fullness. And so he says, Thou art Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And he says, Upon this rock, I will lift that strategy, that ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So the church is God's only chance and hope. Not because he is not mighty. He has chosen through his predeterminate counsel that it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression. And so the agenda of the, of the Father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church. It's not at the mercy of the might of God. It's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God. It's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints, that they build up the saints, that they orient the saints, that they they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transform will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry giving god space to find expression in the earth this is what ministry is all about hallelujah so the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light and rather than exposing the people to the light of God that equips them and prepares them as an army it gives them a form of godliness but the, the capacity the power in it to birth that transformation is not there so for such people their testimony is ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so they learn they have devotionals right there's all kinds of bible studies and prayer monday tuesday wednesday thursday there are church services however those activities have been shrouded in religion and so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of god in them and so after many years of being in church after many years of being an elder being a deacon being a pastor after many years of a church existing that desire of God is unable to find expression because the average believer does not even know why they come to church. They come to church as a way of satisfying guilt. They come to church as a way of, of trying to dance to status quo so that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal. But it's much more than that. There is a heart cry. And those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable. They are the ones who the Bible talks about them. It says for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come. Realities that are not apportioned for our dispensation, but on the strength of their yieldedness, they can touch into certain things. This is what happened to David. It was not given to him to see the coronation of Jesus. It was not in his dispensation. But his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation. And he said, the Lord said to my Lord, 
sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The prophet Isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that Joel would prophesy about. But because of his alignment, he tasted of an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation. And he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me. Wherein I have said this is the rest and the refreshing. It was Joel that began to prophesy. All of these prophets bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda. And here we stand today. The prophesied generation. Here we stand today. The generation that all the prophets have spoken about. While they stood here, they saw you in the loins of prophecy. And here we are. Majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the, in the futility of religion unable to partner with the Holy Spirit to exert any tangible force in the Spirit as far as advancing his agenda is. We are caught up in the web of religion, pastor, apostle, prophet, caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences, organizing ourselves and organizing God and his agenda out of our program. But Jesus said this, Jesus himself, not a prophet, he said your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come meaning if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda you do not deserve to live for he said I shall not die he didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion he said I shall not die but live Is God speaking to us? And so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church. God wants to do this by revealing himself. Listen. The way that the agenda of God will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race. So the agenda is twofold. The manifestation of it first to you the battle acts he wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life that your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory that your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true and that the power of god exists and then out of that experience you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power from your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come. Are we learning something? Say after me, God desires that my life will host his presence. God desires that my life, my body, my spirit will host his power. God desires that I become an expression of the reality of God's ability here and now God desires that I become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now that's God's desire for you God's desire is bigger than giving you a wife don't reduce God God's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep the devil can give you a jeep God's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing. God's desire is that the fullness of himself, he wants you to become a conduit of his glory, a conduit of his wisdom. That word, dogza, the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by, he wants it to find expression. So the limitation of the agenda of God is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his might. The inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented God in the earth. This is the tragedy in the earth right now. He wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life. 
please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you no he wants to reveal himself in you then through you in you then through you in you then through you there are two limitations that the bible reveals to us two limitations that can frustrate the church from achieving this there are two limitations that the bible points to us that as much as we say we love god there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the father number one the first limitation is what the bible calls the gates of hell the gates of hell matthew 16 verse 18 the gates of hell the first limitation that the bible openly points out to us that will be a challenge it will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda the gates of hell he said and i say unto thee thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell not demons not principalities the gates the fullness of the arsenal of hell what is the gate of hell it means satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has in an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom that's what is called the gate of hell the gate of hell represents satan and all his gimmicks comes from the greek word stratomai it says do not be unaware of the devices that word is stratomai the strategies the skills the arsenals of satan there is a formula he uses for deception there is a formula he uses for witchcraft there is a formula he uses those formulas are like secret codes they are also called mysteries that is the principle with which he has brought nations for instance the bible tells us that satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity he says and to deliver them through who through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage so the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear and like job what you fear now becomes your lot are you getting me so the bible says the gates of hell will rise you want to get a job there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you it is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell you want to get married there is a spiritual formula because your marriage has a root to bringing this agenda to pass since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce and satan will fight it it's not about you coming from east or west it's about something when he said the seed the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed he's still searching today hallelujah and he will use everything everything he will use everything your sensory perceptions your financial condition your family situation your academic condition every strategy satan is desperate more desperate than you can ever imagine to see that the agenda of god does not come let me tell you those who trivialize the reality of satan and his plot to fight to death the agenda of god are joking jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church the gates of hell the spirit of religion came from satan activity without power came from satan because when the nation of israel in egypt wanted their exodus the moment they told moses we want to go moses told a m pharaoh what did pharaoh say occupy them is because they are free start giving them activities let them have meetings upon meetings seminars upon seminars and then they get busy and it convinces them that activity is equal to spirituality. Is God speaking to us tonight? Hallelujah. The gates of hell. They will haunt you. I guarantee you. When Jesus went to fast, Satan followed him and stood somewhere 
watching Jesus praying, listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days. Satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around. He was waiting because it was a, it was a, 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 a defining moment for Jesus. As soon as Jesus was done, here comes Satan. His strategy again. If you are really the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth. And the Bible says when Jesus overcame him, what did he do? He left him for a season. Is it in your Bible? He left him forever. Make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil will cross his leg and say, wow, promise. So you are going to have a great ministry in the future. Well done. You are a new creation in Christ. You are joking. You are joking. Hallelujah. The gates of hell they will rise brothers and sisters let me tell you the gates of hell will rise you are a brother you love god the gates of hell will rise through different strategies hallelujah look at samson the gates of hell rose up he was just moving and one demon entered a lion and the lion came to feed. You think the lion just, he was just strolling around and he said, lion, let's, let's try wrestling. You think that's what was happening to Samson? Because Satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength. So he used the strongest of the beasts. And a lion came and Samson tore it into pieces. And Satan said, it's not there. Strategy change. He used the Philistines. They caught him. Right? And he, he used the jawbone of an ass. Satan said, I missed it again. Another strategy, Delilah. If I've used physical strength, let me use emotional strength. Where is that beautiful Delilah? And Delilah came. And Satan saw how vulnerable Samson was. He said, we are making progress. We are making progress. He, he, Delilah insisted. And when she cut off his hair, the judge of Israel had been brought to his knees. Hell began to celebrate. The gates of hell prevailing. Samson's eyes were plucked off. Samson's hair was cut off. And I can imagine God saying, come on Samson, you gave it cheap to Delilah. You would have asked me for a wife, I would have given you a wife. And Delilah ran away. But then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore. Listen, God said, Samson, I know you have blown it. Your Lord now is death. But you would, you would die in victory. Let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium. And the strength will be restored. And Samson said, oh Lord, I know I've sinned against you. The, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge. I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah. That's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter. You carry your death. You are insulting Esau for taking porridge. And some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge. When you know what is upon your shoulder, you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit. Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge. But then, you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed. He said, oh God, let me die with them. And while he pushed, the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Imagine the mass burial of evil. All the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them. Every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the counsel of darkness and left and now probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s who knows one woman was crying in slave trade and say oh lord i may die but let this little child of mine exalt your name 
and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that lord i saw a vision that africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and god is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy how we limit him how we limit him the gates of hell first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 let's hurry up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. Is because you have not done anything striking enough at least start praying pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens that's the night somebody will appear to you and say let me warn you your father obeyed us your mother obeyed us take care and leave you wake up in the morning and say what happened i'm praying and i'm seeing somebody appear and you think he's backsliding is because fire did something in the spirit the gates of hell let me tell you there are giants in every mountain. Don't let any man fool you. Mm. I pity any man of God that wants ministry, wants crowd, wants miracle and will not pray. You are roaming around doing geo or doing president. You will die like a chicken, I tell you. See, let me tell you though if you know how desperate satan is to destroy your life satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going that's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of god because for one month now you have not prayed some of you and you have traveled and gone everywhere and yet nothing happened just a kai it's just because i'm in christ ay, 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 ay. A lady prayed in the night brothers and sisters prayed in the night physically in the morning her uncle called her and said what did you do her physical uncle alive what did you do i can't remember he said be careful you don't know who you are trying let me tell you gates will not open like that you want to bring breakthrough you want barrenness to stop in your family you want oppression to stop the cause of poverty to stop all this all this tea christianity will only the devil will encourage you to keep doing it but let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell oh yes i tell you reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of jesus is not there it's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord how many of you have finished praying and you find out that your loved ones die insulting you and there is fight in the house it's when you finish praying the day you don't pray there's joy and peace and love even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you but you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop as you step out they say look i've been warning you and you are saying what did i do it's not the person the gates of hell attempting to stop you You tell that man, no, I won't sleep with you. I'm going somewhere and see what happens. That's the day somebody will come and tell you, we don't do it like this in Nigeria. Better bend or become a fool. And you sit down and say, truly, 
Satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny. I know what cares Satan. I found out early in life. The moment you say, I am taking a step, I tell you, Satan fears you. It's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who have determined when you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. I say, it, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You are my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is the gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. It will meet you when you are about to give birth. One of our ladies just put to bed. Annie, worship team. Bouncing baby boy. Hallelujah. At a point, they were talking stories here and there. And she said she had a dream. And she saw me. I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit. No, I say it with, with all humor. If you see me in your dream, before this, hear what I'm saying, before you carry newspaper around and say, you are, you are programming all of that. Let me tell you, some of you are not serious with your destiny. Even you, you know you are not serious. That's why the gate of hell will pass you. You say, what of me? They say, no, 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 you are not an issue. There is somebody we are looking for. Listen, may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you. You would think it's spiritual growth, but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit. You are not striking any chord. When the devil wants to destroy your parents, he comes freely. No resistance whatsoever. You snore in demons, come in, do what they do, and they, and they, they come out and you wake up. I refuse my life to be like that. For as long as I am alive, the devil will know that I love the Lord and I will stake my life to see his kingdom come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know there are some of you is the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family? Make no mistakes about it. They are criticizing you and you don't know why. It's a reaction. Don't stop. That's the time to stay. After they do all of that, you find a corner. Kabo katalabataya. Ay, 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 ay. you know how kings reign come on you know how they reign you don't stand outside behaving like a fool you lock yourself fire is rising everywhere in the spirit and the gates of hell are saying here he comes again may they know your name he said Jesus I know Paul I know Joshua Selman I know they will know you and know your tongues once they hear it they say here he comes tongues that have grown with pain tongues that have grown with sacrifice the gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life please be aware of it you may be as beautiful as the sun you will watch men pass you like this that's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes Hallelujah. One day in my life, fridge fell on my head. The devil wanted to destroy my life. Yet, by the mercy of God, I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games. That's why, if listen, when the devil was doing that, he saw the word I'm giving you. It, it's not just because of Joshua Selman. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent. Backslide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, 
if you travel up and down and come back safe it's not luck there is a law of life if you don't know it you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life tomorrow we are going to a bomb shore praise the lord to go and invade and set fire is fire all the way brothers and sisters mm. to break every chain break every chain may your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory that when you show up come on man look there are some of you the reason why god will insist that you marry somebody is because he's taking himself to that family he packaged himself to you and he's saying go there and you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say for introduction welcome note lift up your heads all the gates that's introduction but why has your life not passed this kind of threat to the gates of hell hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died Satan took his body his dead body they were fighting over his dead body Satan said he's dead I still want it because if he resurrects I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens the dead body of a man Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already seeing you are not blind behold man takatayabada I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy the word power there is the word exousia authority i give it to you joshua selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but god will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life i'm not playing games this is not an issue of i'm calling to the ministry of prayer nobody's called into any ministry of prayer i say everybody is called into the ministry that will make jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what i'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if i don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that The mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night 
you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level you carry your Bible you carry your recorder this is what I do this is what I do I put heavy worship for hours and while that is happening I'm lying down flat with notebooks shut Oh Lord, this land is opening up. God said, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I would have made a fool out of myself. And God says, I want to do more, son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy Shekinah comes. I lie down there. I sleep and I wake up. I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired. I say, sleep there. You're not going anywhere. That's what you do on your bed. You lie down, then you put your phone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. It's spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray. Satan will still not use it as a yardstick. Because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness. That scripture still fortifies me. While God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on, you know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means. Keeping you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it it does not mean I did not give you he said I give you authority let's hurry up the second limitation that the Bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray the first limitation is the gates of hell Satan but the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression. Now, let me explain something very quickly. I want to just correct something very, very quickly. Please look up. I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students, the thing was just nailing them and uh, God, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. Me. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. 
Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what you have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That's religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? Is What I'm saying is, can you separate the spirit of man to say, this is spirit. You, this is soul. Stand here. This is body. Can that happen? Look at me. When a man dies, how many objects or entities are separate? Two. Is that not true? Whatever you call it, whether spirit or soul, we're about to find out. But whatever, let's call it X. X comes out and the body is lying down there. Correct? Is that true? We're about to get the name of X now. Listen. <laughs> you say why? Don't say why. There's no why in the question. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? If you don't understand this, you will be confused. Which part relates to God? Which part should change? Which part goes to heaven? And there is, that's to tell you believers are not even growing. Because if you are growing, you must meet this question on the way. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the soul? Look up. We teach that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Very correct. It's only that we don't think over what we are saying. Joshua Selman. Listen. Joshua Selman is a person. He has a handkerchief. He lives in a room. How many? Assuming this room is a living thing. How many living things do we have? Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call the soul, please get this. Never forget what I'm about to teach you now. What you call the soul, listen, is the spirit of man, but connected to his will, emotions, and intellect. The will, emotion, and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Bible says man is a spirit, it is true. In that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God, right? But the spirit like that, if the spirit just comes to the body, there will still not be interaction. Because of law of territory. Go and get my message, mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught on the law of territory. That there must be compatibility in territories. That's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth. They need material bodies. Is that true? Because of the law of territory. So the spirit as it were is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line. Are you getting what I'm saying now? An attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body. And that attachment is the mind composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul, you are right. When you say man is a spirit, you are right. But I'm telling you the dynamics of the difference. Because when you get born again, this guy, watch this. When you get born again, in, in his original sense, your spirit man is united with Christ. It experiences the fullness of salvation immediately. Immediately. Oneness. So where? 
Are you getting my point? The Zoe life implanted here. But that Zoe life has not found expression in this body. That Zoe life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you. That is why although you are born again, you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke. The memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line, the will, emotion and intellect has not been transformed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible puts it this way. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9. You need to understand this. Habalists understand this. Those who do astral travel, right? What they call them, Hare Krishna, or all this world religion, they understand this very well. It's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught. Everybody read. Want to read. The word end there is the culmination of your faith. Receiving the culmination of your faith. What is it? This is talking to believers. What is the salvation of your soul? The salvation of your soul is when your will, your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit. The degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So watch this. All authority has been given. So we believe the word of God. That means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of Jesus. That means that if the mind of Christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially, nothing will be impossible for you again. Because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we following what I'm saying? But this is usually the problem. Watch this. All power is here. The body is a puppet. It's ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now this is all the power of God. But this is the level of access. So that power can barely find expression to the body. So all that the body executes, are you getting what I'm saying? Is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there. But because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read. Oh, sick bodies, you can be healed. Blind, you will be healed. And your spirit man is saying, yes, we have the power, don't fear. But because you do not have that vision of your soul, the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes and i say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down i say look ginger your fate let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented. You just misrepresented Jesus Christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves. Do you agree with me? Now I am telling you that God is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation. As mighty as he is on the throne, he is at the mercy. Give me space. And then while you are struggling, a man like Benny Hinn comes and he just stands and says holy if you are in a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what i'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man called your will 
emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of God find expression because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to Christ except you don't believe the Bible but that Christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so I come as a preacher and I say in the name of Jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak so I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ be free and nothing happens when nothing happens over a long time the devil now comes and says why don't you try me you have tried the rest Jesus being part of the rest and you say truly let's go to the village we have tried man of God I appreciate you I know God is using you mightily but the emergency requires another force to come into attention and the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties see this is the same thing that happens when demons come watch this watch this watch this watch this let me teach you something now watch this a man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the holy spirit seeks to attach himself that's called demon possession are you getting me the will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything this man can be born again demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties so between the spirit and the body there is an interruption are you getting what i'm saying now so he can be born again yet anger is still killing him he can be a man of god yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues genuine tongues real tongues and you are saying kai this man of god is fake no he's not fake something is happening in the soul realm the salvation of his soul has not been perfected so the bible says it this way the weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through god are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality you see the concept of immortality that many preachers people like kobus great man i love and honor he's gone to be with the lord he caught the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of its manifestation so he knew from the word of god that if immortality is at work in your life the first thing that happens is you stop aging at once you stop aging that's a sign that immortality is at work but it so happens that immortality is not an impartation the fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body lies. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Bless you guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One 
who are the day mortal men God wanted to step in oh Israel I want to do mighty things in your midst but the Bible says they limited God they limited God a man can limit God brothers and sisters how many times have we limited God in our lives how many times have we limited God in our finances how many times have we limited God in our ministries who told you the dead cannot rise who told you all these things cannot happen there is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man and so every time we engage I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation listen I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life I've never seen it before never laid hands on anybody I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do and one day there was a lady who came from somewhere and I prayed you know we bought food for her and then she I prayed for her she got born again and I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit just by faith and I just laid my hands and it was as if I was dreaming I just saw somebody moving back I had barely touched her and that's how she just went on the floor ah. I said oh God what, what is this good news that I'm seeing so be excited when you begin to see don't just be childish about it that's because some of you once you see that you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small so that the anointing will enter fast you now go and look for small small ladies and try to throw them i remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you not fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abi. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Panchin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we have like, um, we we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually 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 hallelujah let me use medical terms have you seen times when medical people a woman wants to give birth right and they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough is that true is there a baby yes does he want to come out yes why is he not coming out the mother right and sometimes they have to do all kinds of things Wars come to wars when nothing is wrong they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out pray that God will not have to do CS for you for this destiny thing to come out by force as soon as Zion travails the Bible uses that simile too she will put forth a child so the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the spirit over the years we have been able to open a little more so the transformation that has our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the word of god so more of heaven can find expression to our lives but compared to where god wants to take we are still so slow this is why we must continue contending are you getting what i'm saying now that is the reason why we celebrate men of god we don't just celebrate the men we celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketri. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade immediately they spot her car that's how healings and deliverance happen i was shocked i didn't know there's such a person in the earth ah 
the day I saw that I said my goodness ah this is heaven this is what we are saying this woman stepped into the crusade ground and my goodness the kind of miracles I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not you are just afraid of the pastor so you say yes provable miracle wounds that will close right away not magic right away wounds closing I said my goodness oh God so you still have men and women and ladies do you know you have an advantage over men because of your configuration your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit you see that that's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit let's write a few things a transformed mind I'm defining it now a transformed mind is the mind of Christ that's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ a transformed mind is the mind of Christ I'm defining it now it is the mind that has come into agreement it is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the Word of God come into agreement and alignment with the word of God comma and has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit that's a transformed mind so a will emotion and intellect that has come into agreement you no longer conflict the principles of God an alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit this is what the Bible calls the end of your faith the culmination of the work of salvation and this very one transformation is not initial it's not automatic it's not at once it's progressive it takes a while it is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Walk it out. The walk out there. It says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, comma, walk out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency what is the work there is the name given to your participation your cooperation with the Holy Spirit in your fasting you are working it out I'll be sharing with us in your prayer and all the points I'm about to give you here you are working it out Romans chapter 13 verse 14 the Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is like a cloth. Put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? By so doing, make no provision for the flesh. That means there will be space for the flesh until you put on. That put on, the transformation is like wearing a new garment. Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit. Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life 
That means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life. Not how much you carry, but how much will find expression. So you can carry God as we all believe, but you never see that God show up in your life. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified in my life, Lord, be glorified today? Can you sing that song? Lord in my life. In my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. hallelujah so what is your own part of the deal as far as your your transformation is concerned remember the purpose of your transformation is to give god space in the earth through your life that god will find expression through you that god will find expression through your church man of god there is so much god can do with that ministry woman of god there is so much god can do in you but your disalignment has made him look small I have made you too small in my mind. Ah, how true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Show yourself in my life And in my heart And with my song Oh Lord Be mad Oh that's the song you must sing That's the song of transformation Be magnified Break the walls Break the boundaries Be magnified Oh Lord Be magnified Oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing You can't do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. St. Patrick's, a great man that lived, a man had died, brothers and sisters, six months. He was dead and St. Patrick's came and said where is the grave true story when they showed the grave he signed his signature on it St. Patrick he said Diggy, they brought the man out alive in this earth men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods I shared with you about ancient I study a lot about revivals I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway there was no money to buy another one he held it and drew it and completed it Hi. transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly Catherine Kuhlman she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating she didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. It 
A.W. Kenyon, men who allowed the possibilities of God. You don't die less than 70 in his church. He will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident. A car climbed his legs, broke his bones. And all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him. Because he sees through his eyes. And he looked at him, allowing heaven to pass through your eyes. And the bones started making noise. We say it today like mystics. But men, the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? Imagine brothers and sisters, Elijah, he was talking with God on the mountain. And they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire with came, consumed them and they went back physically. Daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled. Joshua told the son to stand still. There is something we are missing in our generation. And Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind, imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space and see the little things that trickles of his presence that happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish, I wish. That's the reason why God transports men from region to region. He's transporting himself through them. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop. And God is going there through the degree we have given him. He expects to do great things, but he wants to do more. Unfortunately, Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants. So probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die, but I may not be able to raise him. And I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity. Because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul. Took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just shook himself. <laughs> Say, guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said... I am in the straight betwixt. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay. But I'll stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John. His mind was so aligned. They threw him in boiling pot. And nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth. That's your singular challenge. That's your singular task. Content for transformation. Give God space through your life. My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me. That there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman be there. Hey. See, 
the bible said you shall lay hands on the sick it didn't say you shall say be healed just take me near that person and he will be healed god wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with god unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of god are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic so how are you changed what's what's what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly praying in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening whether you know it or not that's why i encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayers prayer in the spirit is one of god's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly is one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you, see, you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current shell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is big before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 of first corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of god right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call unto me and i will answer 
and show thee great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type i have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily james chapter 5 verse 16 the fervent not joking and trivial prayer the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much amplified says is dynamic in its working so when you pray when you pray in the spirit you are enlarging your capacity you see why we pray you see why we believe in the ministry of prayer it's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast we are not trying to add to what Jesus has done we are opening up to receive all that he has brought number two the second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word so here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word notice i didn't just say the word of god is for a reason because if i say the word of god many of us have been reading bible but the insight and the revelation the illumination you get from the word of god and then in addition to that our obedience to the word of god is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us listen listen the word of god is like a bag that carries treasures your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of god is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion A few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 let's look at it very quickly we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake Okay, let's go to Acts 8 verse 29 to 30. While I look that up. Acts 8. It was a story. The story of the utopian Enoch. Watch this. That guy could not experience God in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding. And when the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself to the chariot 30. And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said what? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it. Do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 
receive I pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth the last scripture john chapter 1 verse 12 this is the one that blew my mind the bible says as many as received him who is the him the word but as many not everybody will receive the word many will read the word many will admire the word but very few will receive it he said but as many as receives that word that word gives them power to become power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly number three the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship a life of intense worship intense worship bible says do not be drunk with wine wherein in excess he said but ye be filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourself in psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the lord let me tell you something about worship i've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of god to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of god's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what i call his emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he's there in their midst god with us but there is his shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up second chronicles 5 12 to 14 second chronicles 5 it says and also the levites which were singers all of them of asaph of Haman of Jedutun with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen having cymbals and pastries and psalms stood at the east end of the altar and with them a hundred and twenty priests worshipping and sounding trumpets next verse and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for the Lord is good for his mercy endured forever that what happened the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord next verse the Shekinah of God came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the Lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of God comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerfully in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities come and meet the worship team 
let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you just lie down in your room you may be sleeping normally but let the songs just play sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing no words to them and you are just soaking and after a while the shakina of god like a hand resting upon eggs remember what i said about the hand a hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of god when it rests upon you hallelujah acts chapter 16 verse 25 the bible tells us that paul and silas were locked up in the prison and the bible says they prayed and they sang they sang praises to god and the prisoners had them he had them oh my god that's why we worship a lot in koinonia it's the secret of the presence it's a secret look at every man that walks in the anointing every man that walks in the miraculous Benny Hinn will worship for hours Dr. Paul Enenche would worship for hours men who know God men who carry the anointing Catherine Kuhlman all these great people they would sing hymns and worship for hours and when the presence rests wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves your job is to get God to the scene and step out our worship team all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of koinonia worship team is not to entertain koinonia the very assignment of koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of god finds expression that's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good and your mercy forever. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. try to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but i want you to pray with all your heart i like you to pray and ask the lord and say lord bring me to that place where the mind of christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray I'm willing to give the God of miracles space the God of breakthroughs the God of signs and wonders the God of impartations the God of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. 
pray let heaven invade his mindset let heaven invade his ministry let heaven invade his business let heaven invade his marriage outside make sure you are praying outside make sure you are praying Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our souls, invade our bodies. Let the fullness of the capacity the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression hallelujah hallelujah look up you're going to pray for yourself and say Lord in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life. After the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Catherine Kuman, that prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul, after the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick, my territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games. No playing games with destiny. No playing games. Shake it, 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 it. The sick must be healed through my life. The oppressed must be delivered. Sinners must be saved. Sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you space. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first, the gates of hell. The solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it. The second is the limitation that your mind gives you. The solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word. We are going to pray. There are forces that have vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space. There are all kinds of forces but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes Break it, 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 break it,
Hallelujah. Please permit me to raise one more prayer point. I know we're out of time, but this is burning in my spirit. Look up. Hallelujah. God is doing things. Fire is burning in this place. Listen. Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not growing. Nothing was happening. They had the heart. They had the mandate. But they were spiritual walls. And they were fasting together with the pastors. Lord, what is it? And the Lord told him, come out. And he came out. And he said, look. And he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud. He said, this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry. There are people who are genuine. But the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest and Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your single head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your heads. Forces of lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your heads. Pray. Begin to command. Decree. Command. Decree. Command. Release my marriage. Release my job. Release my academics. Release my destiny. Release my ministry. Release my mantle. Release my anointing. Release my destiny helpers. Release my unction. Shokote. Skata. Mapate. Toprotokete. Egatatatata. Tekete. Sakatos. Marekete. Sekete. We set fire, fire on altars of darkness. We set fire on yokes. We set fire on devils. We command by the fire of the word, by the fire of the blood, by the fire of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academics, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. 
God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container the oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason. May he jack back to life today. Hallelujah. Now quickly keep standing everybody. Our time is fast spent. But there are people inside and outside the Lord brought you. And you know that you have not made your ways right with the Lord. You love God. But you know you are tired. You are saying man of God I'm tired of the way my life is. And I'm crying for help. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you gave your life to Christ but for some reasons you found yourself moving in one way or the other. Please make your way inside and outside. We have one minute for this. I'd like you to rush out and come before God. Come. This is the place of empowerment. Welcome home. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody. I know there are many people outside. Make your way inside. Run to Jesus. The place of empowerment encounter that will change your story please take God seriously tonight don't play games with your destiny Jesus wants to invade your life hallelujah keep coming for those who are here listen I salute you and I congratulate you there is no room for lukewarmness in this Christian race and let me tell you no matter where you are don't feel guilty you can take off from there. God is willing to reach down to you and start with you. Everybody started from somewhere. Therefore, I want you to lift your right hand. Please, you are not reciting a point. I want this to be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word and I mean business with you from this night. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity.